Knurling is a manufacturing operation used to create a pattern of small edges on a surface, usually in the shape of a diamond. Primarily used to improve grip characteristics, knurling is commonly found on hand tools, barbells, and hardware, among other things. And fortunately, it doesn't have to be difficult to create in SOLIDWORKS, even for cylinders. We'll show you how in this 2-minute tech tip. Let's take a look at a relatively simple example on the flat surface of this file. Flat surfaces can often make use of extruded cuts, so I'll start by creating a plane perpendicular to the line where I want to begin the knurling. From here, I'll start a new sketch on the plane and create a four-sided polygon coincident to the end of the line. As a side note, the polygon is just for convenience. You could sketch a triangle with the line tool here if you prefer, but I found this to take longer. I'll make one of the corners coincident to the front edge, add a dimension between the outside points, and extrude a cut through wall in both directions. I can now use the linear pattern feature to create several instances of this initial cut. Once that's finished, I'll simply mirror the pattern and the seed feature across the front plane to create the final diamond shape we expected. Importantly, I've turned on the geometry pattern option here to minimize any potential performance impact. You'll notice there's some overlap here due to the orientation of the cuts, and this should be considered for knurling on flat surfaces, as it may require some cleanup depending on your application. For cylindrical surfaces, the process is a bit more involved, but still relatively straightforward. For this barbell, I've created a series of three parallel planes to simplify the process. I'll start with a sketch on the first plane and convert the circular edge of the bar. I'll then use this circle to generate a helix, using height and pitch mode to determine where the knurling should end. These values will ultimately affect the final shape of the knurling pattern, so feel free to experiment with them. From here, I'll begin a new sketch on plane 1, following a process similar to the flat file, but using a pierce relation to attach the square to the helix, along with a construction line to then create a tangent relation to the edge of the cylinder. Finally, I'll add a dimension to the profile, and I can begin a swept cut. Select the square as the profile, then the helix as the path. When working with helices or other complex paths, it's a good idea to check sweep options and ensure that the profile orientation is set to follow path and that profile twist is set to minimum. Once complete, I can leverage the circular pattern feature to follow a process similar to flat surface knurling using equal spacing and a 360 degree angle. In this case, 12 instances looks pretty good. Finally, mirroring the pattern and the seed feature across plane 2 with the geometry pattern option enabled gives us the finished end result. We can even mirror this set of features across the right plane to extend this whole pattern to the opposite side, but be warned, we're already entering territory where lower end PCs will likely begin to struggle with processing and graphics. If you found this video useful or interesting, give it a like so others can find it too, and consider subscribing to the channel for weekly tips and tricks. Knurling patterns can be created on even more complex surfaces as well, so if you want to learn more, consider taking a look at the SOLIDWORKS Advanced Sketching Techniques course over at SolidProfessor.com and more specifically, the Intersection Curves lesson, where you can learn how to create complex curves to be used as sketch paths for sweep features. Thanks for watching.